I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Good evening. It's 7 o'clock. It's the, the February 5th meeting of the Pembroke Conservation Commission. Just to let everybody know, everybody we're being recorded and it's available on TAC TV, I believe. It's not the official news, but that's that's what I can remember right now. Can we have a roll call? Who's here? Rick Biden. Mark Edgerton. Sandra Simon. Scott Glovin. Paul Clark. Rachel Keller. Everybody's here then, right? Yeah. No, Sharon's here. Sharon's here. Yeah. Sharon's Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, okay. Have we got anything we need to discuss before 710? If only if you wanted to discuss anything that's in the mail. Anything in the mail, guys, you'd like to discuss? There, there is a, a whole bunch of grant opportunities that we should really um, look into. There's like you know, probably 100 different items on here. Um, comes from Josh Cutler from the State House. Oh, you get copy of it. So, uh, yeah, maybe should we, can you get copies yeah, of them? No problem. Okay. Yeah, sure. There's a lot. So I'll put that on. Actually, a hundred of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put good copies of the mail for next week, then? Is that worth being there? Oh, no, I'd like to read it this week so I can. Be oh, no, but that's what I'm saying. Yes. So we could, we could discuss it next week. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anything else in there you'd like to discuss? I think so. No. Anybody else got anything they'd like to discuss? Um, on the Bicentennial Trail, um, Newcomb doesn't have a machine large enough to do the um, Herring Run Park and the Parsonage Patch north of Bicentennial Trail. He suggested Bicentennial Trail would be um, just too big for his machine. He's got a smaller machine. And then we have to do, you know, figure out what we can do in there. But there is a, a tree above the fallen house. He was going to give us an estimate for that. Just a climber, does that bring a crane in and climb it yourself? Yeah, we looked at it. We couldn't get in there with the town bucket. That's right, right, right. So I was going to do that. And um, we wanted to, I, I wanted to go to bid or just hire somebody where it's under a certain amount of money to get some bids to put a stove pipe and fix the carrying shack. You know, just get it done. That's what you just get a bid, right? Right. Well, just, have to get just hire somebody that's under that amount of money. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we have to get uh, just have the fire department check it before? I, I, think we, I, I think would we assume, want to see it before. Just right. I would assume that um, it's any building code is typical today. It's a uh, cement board is a half inch uh, offset with a half inch draft to the back and a half inch under draft. I know that. No, what I'm saying so do we need to apply for a building permit oh, before no, we do anything? Know, a permit yeah. is definitely in order. I mean. So we need to so see well, George. Well, well the company contractor do, do that? Just they do all that stuff. Isn't that on them to do that? Yeah, but if they do it, we have to pay for the building permit. Okay. If we apply for it. Oh no, I did. That there's no cost. That. No mm -hmm. cost to the town board. Absolutely. Applies that building one. permit. Absolutely. I still think we need a ballpark figure before we just go out and hire anybody to do anything. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. It could free. be anything from five dollars to five thousand. Right. I mean, you're going to get somebody responsible and obviously competitive, uh, not just one person, but get competitive, and then. You know, get her done. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Okay. Must be seven. No, we're not still even at seven ten yet. Stop it fast. Six more minutes. We could cry about the game together. I don't know why I missed the last game. We might okay. before we even open these hearings. We do not have DEP numbers on the first two hearings. Our ground rules are we can talk, we can't take a vote, we can't do we can't act, on, act it. on it without a DEP number. So I mean other than getting up being briefed up to date on it, it's about all we can do. Okay. I'm still not at seven ten yet. I lost my phone. Oh. Yeah. Seven five. You want, you want seven ten? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you got seven ten <laughs> by my watch. Okay. 
we're gonna do, we're gonna just go a few minutes early here. Notice of intent for 34 Beverly Way. I see Mr. Stone in the background. Yeah. You want to come up and just give us a brief? I don't know if you heard Bob, but we don't have a DEP file yet, so we can't really <coughs> act on it. We've got all the paperwork and everything done. They're waiting for our check to clear, which we got a photocopy from the bank showing it's in there and everything. They just they won't issue the number until then, so we're just waiting on that. Everything else is in order. Um, I'm not really sure what else you want. If you need a copy of that, or you just no. want to wait. Okay. So we have to wait regardless now. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what your project is? I uh, just put an in ground swimming pool um, near the wetland. The wetlands are an issue, so we're and we've got it mapped out, the wetlands identified where everything is going. Um, So the swimming pool is you know, within a hundred foot buffer, but it's not within 25 feet. Looks like it's probably closer to 50 feet to the wetlands. And then they want to put a shed a few feet into the 25 foot buffer. I know, I know the problem. But it's a, my my concern will be at the corner that we're working right on the on the wetland line. Uh, no, it's well, two things there. One is what what are we what are you using for cleaning on this pool? Uh, and what what are, what are you going to do with the discharge? That's a big so We can use the cartridge filter, which you take apart and clean out. So there is no discharge, or we can use a sand filter, um, which has a backwash of discharge. Um, I would do those two over, say, a DE filter, which you know leaves a mess with the DE. Well, that's that will be one of the one of our big concerns will be the cleaning of the pool where it would be evident that you're only 20 feet at maximum away from the wetland. Okay. And there is a dry well on there as well on that drawing. And that's closer to the pool farther away from the wetlands. Is the soil going to take it? Some of that soil. Well, and right. I'm just asking because I know some of that soil down there is not necessarily good Taking a water. Good drainage. Okay. Um, what size is the well? What capacity? You know, I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. I'd like to see the detail. Okay. Um, going to it yeah well no there's no description of the, the soil around it here that we're okay. putting in. is that the sub the soil that's there would that be a uh i mean we're bringing stone? crushed stone into wrap okay. it right around there okay. you know, pea stone on top three quarter to half inch around it um two so and a half feet system. all the way around it yeah bob knows more with the soil there I mean, you can change that whole area, but that whole general area is not yeah, just it, normal it, sandy. It doesn't look like it's a small system, though. I mean, mm -hmm.
looking at plan fence around, well, or two things. One, it says proposed property line. What is a proposed They're property line? Buying line? property from the neighbors? Yes. Yeah. That hasn't been done yet? So the land's been surveyed, and my neighbor and I have agreed, but we hadn't, I hadn't purchased it yet because I didn't want to buy it without that. Because that might be a, you have to check if that's a problem we're issuing with, we're issuing right. Issuing on somebody else, right? So I think we we can do that. I'm pretty sure we can do it, but it's still it's not cut it's not as cut and dry as if you right. Yeah, I mean, my thought was I didn't want to buy it yeah. if it didn't, oh, right. if it didn't yeah. go through. Yeah. Uh, he'd be happy to speak with you or produce a letter. He was willing to come if I needed him tonight. He's very amenable to it. Or, you know, the, and just to use your pool lobby so a little bit. I told him I'd put a gate in the back. <laughs> I, I suggest an open and closed yeah, flag. Yeah, really <laughs> Pardon? An open, open and closed, closed yeah. flag yeah. for the neighborhood, yeah. green yeah. or, or red. Yeah. So we technically yeah, have pool the neighborhood. Until that is not a good thing sometimes. In his. Is it ownership? We don't have to go before zoning and all of this. I think if we were going to not purchase the land, we were going to have to go to zoning for a variance for the. Then that answers the other question: is then we can't issue until a purchase would be done because we'd be having to use the old property lines. Okay. Well, I guess what he's looking for is, uh, you know. Uh, if he goes and purchases the what, land, will it? What I, what I. Well, we would, we would have to sign. We'd have to the sign application. Sure. As long as, we, as long as he can prove to us, the actually kind of the rule of thumb is the buffer zone. We don't protect the buffer zone. The buffer zone is there to protect the wetland, so yeah. that if you can prove that you can work in the buffer zone and not affect the wetland, then we. We'll normally try to work with you. Yeah. I'm happy to plant better greens or a bus or whatever. But it's yeah. a, yeah. no, that's kind of how we look at it. And again, in this case, you were looking at the back side of a building. In other words, you, you think what you can do and kind of convince us when you, because you got to come back no yeah. Yeah. Uh, and convince us that, you know, what you're doing there is going to protect us. We want to protect the wetland. We don't like you that close. We don't even really like you the 25 foot, but Sometimes you got to take the lot and what's there, and you don't have a lot of other place you can go with it either. Right. Yeah. So if you can prove to us that you can protect the wetland and it's not going to affect it, then the existing tree line um, is in protection. And the existing tree line protection. The uh, existing tree line, which we'll be leaving. You know, we're just. Clearing back to the fence, so the trees that are back here already. Obviously, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, right no, the place I'm concerned is from this corner here, right in. Okay. Other words, yeah. from this green line. And you push on the further. To this green. That this green, all. That, yeah. That's all. Oh, correct. Okay. I'm so back to this corner. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. In other words, it's in this area that I that we need the protection for the for the what? So back. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you're up back over, you know, is is this? You are you clearing right out to this fence line? Is that? Yeah, that's what we're hoping to do. And a lot of that's already, like, part of it's cleared into here. Part of it's cleared I think it would be good if you brought pictures next time you come with us, actual real pictures. Yeah. That would help yeah. you know, your case, I think. It is, a lot. is it right then that we can't get back on this until the um, applicant owns? Yeah, we can't issue it because if we were issuing it here, we're closer than what the zoning right. laws allow us right. to issue. So that the applicant for the next visit should plan on having the zoning. Right. But I, I, his his real thing is doesn't he doesn't want to go through and buy the land if we're not going to do it. Right. We're gonna we're gonna work with you as best we can to get in yep. what you want to get done there. Okay. So but again, it might require that uh, you know, and and we may have to, as you said, oh, if you're clearing all the way over this fence, we may want to clean on this side of the fence too, because yep. you're again within. No, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you're in the 25-foot buffer. Yeah. Right. So, okay. basi so basically, you know, I think anything within the 25-foot buffer 
is going to require a vegetated barrier on you know, your fence, on beside the, your fence. On the inside of the fence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is that an electric generator you have in the background? Backyard too? Excuse is me? Is that a generator? Is it like a, looks like a... No, no generator in the backyard. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <it's like> <laughs> yeah, that's so you need to, you know, drawing showing the new vegetation and what we're going to do with the. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, or spelling out enough in verbal forms that we can do it. But I prefer a drawing yeah. or yeah. Uh, you know, something to I like think a mark. Uh, yeah, something that is prominent that isn't taken to interpretation here and there. Okay. And don't we also usually put in a, a do not cross barrier or post on a job like this? Yeah, he's got a fence all the way around here. Okay, so that's, so, yeah, that, that's, that, that's we might we might we might tell you we gotta put some tags on the outside of right, the fence. Right, that's the same. So this is this is the edge of where you can put not to cross with any okay. items or stuff. There's only a little post that's this tall, it's a four by four little slant cut. Then so you sell the property, you know what you what not to do but then somebody else comes in and yeah. shows them what not to do. Okay. And then as far as the runoff water, the backwashing and the filter, if we go with a cartridge filter, is that fine? That's your business, you know. You're gonna have to sell us on it, you know, because you know your business okay. better than, than we do. I don't know anyone that, I don't pretend to be a, a filter, filter man for pool. Right. But that's, we don't, we're greatly concerned that the backwash doesn't get into our wetland area. Well, a cartridge filter, you don't backwash at all. Right. So. Okay. I think bath walking is okay. You have the right system. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's your choice. You just have to pick the one you want. Maybe a cartridge is cheaper than putting in the drywall. Okay. You know, but you have to figure that out. All right. What you want to do. Then. So is there any reason you guys can see for him not to purchase that land? I, I don't I think depending on we can't plan. take We can't take a vote, but I have, I have no problem with it if it's done correctly. I think it can be done if it's done correctly. Yeah. I, I personally would like to see North Atlantic cedar trees put in. That great stumpy was all North Atlantic cedar trees. Okay. And they're evergreen, they're indigenous, and uh, the only problem you're going to have around there is deer. Well, they love the evergreens. So the deer and, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell it to the deer. <laughs> Eat the deer. People ask me what you do about the deer problem. I say entree. Uh, where can we continue? The um, next. What are you guys doing to go to zoning, do you know? Or? Oh. I think we're all ready to go. Oh, our, 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 our property is to be got a purchase of property. Well, yeah, we can have, we can hold there as long as we don't work. We can do it, but we can't give them the paperwork to do it. We can't close it all the way. So what's that next? Come back and then back again. They might have to win. All right. Yeah. Okay, so the next hearing we have available is the 26th of this month. At 720. Does that work for you guys? Or? Uh, what I yeah, it works. Uh, we're going to get the just update the drawing of okay. the vegetation okay. and okay. Kind of learn a little more info on what we're doing with okay. the wastewater from the filter. Okay, great. Yeah, and by then we should have a DEP file on the part. Yes, you can't break down in the winter anyway, so you're you. good time. Yeah, right. Yeah. I knew this would be a good time. The 26th. February. February 26th. Yeah. Yep. February 26th, right? Yes. Monday. Okay. Is that what was it on? 720. Thank you. All right, so we'll just continue this till the 26th and 720? Yeah. Do I need a motion to do that? Yeah. No. Can I get a motion to continue until the 26th? We have a motion to continue to the 26th. I second that. Everybody agree? I agree. Yeah. See you on the 26th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get your fins ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think we're running a few minutes late, but we have a 720 ANRAD, a 50 corporate five drive Dempsey. Again, it's the same thing. We have no DEP file number, so we can talk about it, but we cannot act on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our 
seems her speed is collecting. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what do we have speaking, please? So, uh, I'm Laura Leach. I work for VHB, and we are here on behalf of Brigham and Women's, who's the applicant. And this is at 15 Corporate Park Drive. Um, <clears throat> there are two, this is an AMAD filing, there are two. Um, wetland areas on this property that we're looking for confirmation from the commission on. Uh, the first area is a stormwater basin here. Uh, it is isolated. It is probably dating to late 1980s, something around then, maybe early 1990s. Uh, That's kind of what we can gain from aerial imagery. Um, and it uh, definitely has hydric vegetation and soils, and it is um, mostly frequencies. Um, and it is, um, to, what, to what we can tell, it was built as a stormwater basin, and um, is, we, would, we would define it as isolated land subject to flooding, mainly because it meets that volume requirement. So we feel that this area would be defined uh, under state regulation, but not local regulation because the bylaw doesn't specifically regulate isolated weapons to our understanding. So that's area, oh, I did an article. That's wetland That's two. easier. <laughs> that's wetland two. Going back to wetland one. Uh, wetland one is a much smaller uh, isolated depression. It does also have wetland vegetation and soils. Um, and basically, what happened when they developed this part of the parcel is um, due to the, the runoff, stormwater runoff, it just heads right in this direction and kind of pools. So it does have wetland features, but it is very small and it is isolated in nature as well. So we are proposing that that area would not be regulated under the bylaw. Um, and we are asking for confirmation uh, from the commission about those two areas. I think she's 100% right in everything she's got there. Yeah, I think that that's just basically a swale, the number one, right, for the parking lot. Really, that's yeah. what that was, if I remember right. And the other one is the retention center that was designed to flood, silt up, which works really well there. I think number one is just a swale, really. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I believe. Yeah. I believe you. You. I don't think we even need to do any field work or anything else because that's pretty much that's what it is. What it is. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. But we don't have a DEP number, so we can't. I know. <laughs> I, I think that's interesting that there's two of us. I wanted to. Yes, yeah, so Imagine that the state's behind. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So. Um, so yeah. So we know we can't vote tonight, but. Um, I guess our, our next step is we propose to continue. Um, is that something that you would still want us to be present for? To I, I was just going to I I just going to pull the board. I think I don't believe we need them to come back as soon as we get a DEP number at our next meeting. I think we could accept the delineation the way it is. And it's yeah, it's, it's very it cut. It's a very cut kind of area. Yeah. 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 All the way down I'll here. Just I'll, just be, I'll be here anyway, just in case. Oh, but <laughs> it's okay. Okay. <laughs> right. This is Howard from BHP um, yeah. as well. So I, I, I live close, so it's easy. <laughs> there you go. So we just need to think of it. We will continue it to move. When would you like to continue it, right? The 26th as well. 26th also. I'm going to say continue this until the 26th of February. 7 7.30. 7 30. I second it. Motion has been made and seconded. Everybody agree? And I, I would say oh. that for your planning, yeah, I agree. The planning, you know, go ahead with it. It's, it's three weeks before we're going to be issuing, right? But, you know, planning wise, you're pretty safe to go ahead. That's great. Right. Yeah, that's great. Thank I'm you. The plan with right. us. No, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Quiet. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
this applicant and some other department. Upstairs, or? might be planning, maybe. This is the worst one. Yeah, do you want all the stuff? Maybe yeah, we can just chat. You each get your own Thank little you. packet this time. Thanks. Because <laughs> did you ask for an independent delineation? Not on this one. No. Uh, this is all <laughs> it's an engineered site. It's an industrial park. It, yeah, it, it's, it's just it, what it, it is. is what it, okay. Yeah, it's it not exactly what it is. Oh, you should and get a the, uh, and basically, the, what all the updates? I don't know if you heard. Uh, and you're right there. You got one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. But it is. And Beth Israel is planning to put a medical center right up there. Oh, well, the one that we just um, yeah, yeah. we just had. Yeah. Good yeah. oh, application. This one is the granite corner. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. The old we pool company. We heard originally that. Eight ball. It's going to be a building uh, tall. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 That's what we were told. Yeah, well, well it hasn't been in the world. It's the on the other side of the road. Really? That's what I've heard. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's on the other side of the road. It's the pool hall right there, 209. Okay. So this is the old Taylor rental building that they were going to do. The neighbor before us, meeting when you weren't here. And Actually, yeah. I was here for that. Oh, you were here. Yeah, he chaired that meeting. I have a little flat yeah. one. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, I'm not sorry you were here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was. Basically, he's just looking to make that building a little bigger so we can work out of it. No, a new building. Well, it's a new building. It's but he's going to use the, yeah, use the, the old yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. He's going to add on. It's an add on, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's eight feet of them that attached. He's yeah. Like that. He's going to have sumps for the, the, the collecting of all the. The, the yeah, dust from the last time we discussed that, yeah. 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 yeah, good design. Yeah, I think our biggest thing was that the size last, last yeah. time is that you had to go before planning. Planning wanted yeah. some things changed, and we didn't yeah. want to no, go until planning was all set. Last planning was pretty well set. Yeah. One of the problems there was putting in all the rain gardens and making it work, and they have a pretty good engineer right here. I think it all worked. It's uh, pretty flat at this point. him right there that just walked in.
they're working with a police officer. Yeah. Which we like at all. Continuation of Notice of Intent for 230 Water Street, Map E15, Lot 12, Spraco. Yeah. Hope I pronounced it right. You got it right. Uh, DE file number SE0561008. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Terry McGovern from Stenbeck and Taylor representing Mr. Stracker and Mr. Jimetti, uh, regarding the proposed site of 230 Water Street. And base, yeah, I'm trying to let me turn it a little bit better. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Excellent. It stays up there. Okay, I'm just going to have to look at my back. Oh, well. It's not good sign anyway. Look at my back. Is that camera will keep in front yeah. of me? <laughs> Um, basically, when we were in the last time, we, we gave a pretty thorough overview of the project. And the primary concern, um, as always with the site, is disposal of drainage from the roof area and the pavement. Um, I enclosed in the packet the review that was done by, uh, or my response to the review that was done by Peter Palmieri, who did a, a very thorough review on behalf of the planning board. And, as a result of that, we made two significant changes to the drainage, um, significant in that it, it changed a little bit of the methodology in which we were handling the roof runoff only, but not affecting the overall site. Um, previously, we had a roof recharge area located along the northerly property line. Uh, it's wooded beyond this proposed project beyond residential property over here. But generally, the property slopes front to back. Um, Mr. Chapman, when he was in, uh, either he or our planning board had both expressed concern about water getting onto his driveway, which right now, the wall area and the trees kind of shield the back area. And he does get a little bit of runoff from up towards the front, but that's been existing all along. That's actually pretty nicely landscaped in that, in that area. And his concern, as he expressed, was if we terrace this off in order to provide cover over a roof recharge system and then slope down, that that water would sheet onto his property. Um, between those comments and Peter's review looking particularly at the soil conditions, we eliminated the roof recharge. Roof recharge, typically you get enough bang for your buck, if you will, up to about a 10 year storm. Beyond a 10 year storm, not really a useful tool. You can recharge, you can store, you can have a storage capacity greater than that, but once you exceed about a 10 year storm, the system itself is surcharging. So, meaning basically above that, it's just bypassing and going into the detention basin anyway. So, in talking with Peter Palmieri, what I expressed to him, because he said really if we're going to count the recharge, we're supposed to have four feet of separation of groundwater, which would have lifted the site even further. If we don't include recharge, 
we can maintain the minimum of two feet to ground water between separation of the bottom of your, your open air basins and where you find groundwater. And we've done that in the rain garden out front. We have a test pit that I did with uh, Lisa Cullity. We got a perk test out here and probably the only natural perkable material left on the site, which is why the sewer replacement sewage system is sited in front. That plus the fact that there's a 25 foot around remove and replace from the old system where the sand is still pretty much intact. When we did a test pit in the rear, and we did two test pits down in this area, which are on the existing condition sheet. I can flip them over. These, the material basically from the area of the existing building back takes a little bit denser uh, element of clay into it. So I attempted a perk test down in this area. It barely moved in the pre soak At least up here I got a, a reasonably good rate and when you pair that up with the soils mapping and you start to look up Water Street, the soils get better as you go to the north. And I remember from doing park tests on Old Landing Road years ago, there's a lot of sand and gravel if you get up into that area. So it starts to get better as you go north. So based on that and talking with Peter, we got rid of the roof recharge. We extended the detention basin around the corner. Um, and it really almost acts as a, a, in this area, acts as more of a swale. It's about a foot higher than across the back. So that basin would be approximately the, height, the depth of the table, two feet. Um, we're showing that we're picking up a graded swale from the area of where we're taking off a piece of the old building. So the little bit of runoff that was gonna come through here before and sheet out, now we'll hit this swale and down into this basin. Um, we're not showing any impervious area down this side before we had kind of a graded base all the way around. And in talking to the fire department, their primary concern was getting access across the front of the building and then down one side of the building. If they got that, they were pretty reasonably happy. We did, um, we did a fairly going to hold it up for a second. We did a fairly involved diagram for the fire department, took it over to them, they walked through it, the deputy felt that it would be sufficient for what they needed to do. He basically admitted they're going to pull in and just pull up in the front however they can fit, but we showed them you can at least get down the side, you can back out and maneuver and, and get out on that side. Um, that pretty much is the one major change we made to the site plan. Everything else we did really were small things. Um, we added some granite curbing to the front. Um, did a little bit, basically pulled some things out in terms of landscaping and, and separated that. But relocated a water line uh, to run in down the driveway since this driveway is going to be repaved anyway out of the curbing to the front. This eliminates a concern with the abutter because we originally showed it coming in along here, the existing water shut off being out in this corner. We're going to tap into the water main that's out in this area. There's a transite water main somewhere in this general area. We'll tap that and just come down and come around and into the building and sleeve it where it's adjacent to the sewage system. So he'll actually even have less disturbance. We noted uh, from Peter's comment that he wanted to see the erosion control extended farther up, so we then extended it past the limits of the work and up to the corner where the building makes a little hook over here. And that, by extending that out farther, that will also limit any silt or sediment getting out towards his property you know, during the construction process. That's pretty much it. That's the changes that we've made. Um, you know, again, the most substantial part of it being eliminating the roof runoff. So that's going to just hit the parking lot and go into the system? Well, or? what the roof runoff will do, some of it will sheet into the rain garden. The rest of it will sheet. We've shown right, leaders so coming directly into the basin. These two will come into this side, which this volume is the equivalent of what would have been in the ground. We were proposing precast concrete chambers. And this will shoot 
directly into the back here. Um, one of the things that I showed Rachel earlier in the day is that on our Yep. On our construction detail. Full of fruit glass. <laughs> on our construction detail sheet. Um, and again, it's really so that we know pretty much for every level of storm event what's taking place in that back basin with the adjustment of eliminating the roof, uh, roof runoff system on the ground. The 100 year storm tops out at, call it elevation 22, 21.9922. Um, our spillway in the middle here in cross-sectional view is at 22.5, so we have six inches to an emergency spillway. And then the top of the berm that goes all the way around the basin. So the spillway, which is located here, will have an emergency spillway at elevation 22. And the very top of this berm that wraps all the way around is at 23. So we have a, we still have one more foot of clearance, which is what you want to have. You want to have once you hit your maximum storm event level you want to make sure that you have one foot of freeboard. The bottom of that basin, as is this one, is under, uh, under drained or bottom drained, which was another change we made given that we couldn't count exfiltration. We added a pipe. We have an outlet spillway. We had a previous pipe up in the middle of the basin um, to outlet starting at elevation 21. And what we did was add a smaller pipe, a six inch pipe down at elevation 19, which is the bottom of the basin at the farthest length down, so that once you get past your two year storm, you're, you have an outlet that's occurring at all the time, which is no greater than what you would have under your existing condition. So the basin will drain, and it drains at the closest point to the adjacent wetland over here but at no greater rate or volume than the existing condition of all the storm. Terry, what's the status with the planning board? We are on in front of them uh, next Monday. Peter Palmieri. Yeah, what I'm even asking that is, I'm not sure we want to sign off until they're done you know, with whatever they, want, they might want for, change, for plan change because then you'd still have to bring their plan change back for us to okay. Um, I think, well, it, we'd have a site walk with the planning board um, back on the 20th. And it's interesting because the only thing they really talked about, the abutters were there, and the only thing they talked about at the time, the abutters, folks over this way, the Wilsons, we're primarily concerned about screening and buffering, um, which we had said at the time we'd propose a fence, solid fence, and some sheared white pines along there to provide some additional buffering. Um, I don't recall Mr. Chapman out back saying anything other than we'd showed him the revised plans and, and the extended base, and, and uh, Phil Howard on the other side really hadn't said anything. And it seemed like the, the primary focus of planning's discussion that day, as I recall, was fire department. And just kind of the building flow of how the operation was going to work. They, they didn't have a lot of other concerns. Um, uh, let me ask you that, right well, about that. Uh, if we were going to close tonight and do it, is that satisfactory with you, knowing that you might have to reopen if something changed over there. I'm, I'm throwing yep. the ball into you yep. to see what you want to do with it. Given, I mean, I, given that um, we're on in front of planning next week, my understanding from talking to the ZBA secretary, Michelle, today is we're not going to get in front of ZBA until March 5th. They have 
one of the members is going in for uh, some kind of minor surgery, but won't be able to make a hearing until March 5th. So the whole matter isn't going to close up, at least until we get in front of them. I guess that the question I can toss back to you is when is your next hearing? And if it's after, like, say, the week after planning, then it's probably, and before ZBA, it's not going to really interrupt the process. Well, it's not going to be the 26th. Yes. Okay. So my response to that would be, from my perspective, it doesn't slow the process any to simply leave it open as a checkoff in case something changes at planning, in case Peter comes back. I don't think it'll happen, but there may be a concern on these gentlemen's part in terms of timing for purchase and sale or execution. So I'll ask you guys as well. Um, actually, nothing, we have to get through the GBA anyways before we even, so it wouldn't make a difference. Um, Mr. Clark, what, was, what is, I'm not sure I've never done this before, what does reopening mean? So could we, if we close tonight and then we had to reopen, what is that? Anything we you have, you have to, to you have to you have to go through all, all a lot of work. permit and yeah, it's more money. I know it's just a matter of coming back and just kind of voting on that. Right. Yeah. Or we're talking about the changes or start the whole process all over. It, 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 it doesn't appear that there's any big problem with what there's we're no seeing. I don't. Risk. I don't see anything that's a big a big problem at all. But it, I don't want to. No close it and then have somebody throw something no, at us yeah. and we yeah. have to. That's why I asked the question. Just so that we could. Yeah, just, just to kind of reassure you folks, um, procedurally, I've always closed a conservation last when I've had a Board of Health or I've had planning or ZBA or something out there and I know there's a review bouncing back and forth and maybe questions from another board. If these folks are satisfied at this point, let it sit for the next two to three weeks. The most because all we have to do is all they have to do is open it and close it. Should we then do it after ZBA? What you're saying? Should we no, it'd be before ZBA. So ZBA would still be last on. Oh, I think you said close it after ZBA. We can we can make it any time after that. Okay. Twenty six is the earliest we can do it. ZBA is not going to, if ZBA changes something substantially, it's all over. Fair enough. No, thank you. Okay. okay. I just have one thing. I that we uh, oh, continue until this is done. Um, you have uh, scheduled to put white pines in there? Yeah, shared white pines. I'm wondering, possibly, could you put in um, cedar trees? Because we're at both the anti cedar trees. You just try to put them in there, any wetlands there are. But if you want a shared tree, then I understand the difference. Yeah, we were trying to get something that had a little bit of height over the fence. But not too much. Yeah, um, really just to provide, I mean, their house is off a substantial di distance. I don't see that it makes a huge difference whether it's cedars or white pines, honestly. It's going to. have the choice, no, it's going <coughs> to provide some screening. Sure. They're a native tree. You're going to be able to get the yeah. cedars as big yeah. as you need to. Well, um, yeah, I believe it came down. New Jersey has yeah. unlimited stocks of company on uh, the creek. Yeah, we're, we're not proposing a ton of them. Just right in that corner to put, I think, six of them in that, four or five, six of them in that corner just to get a little bit of height above the fence, just to get a little extra buffering. The fence typically six foot high. We're talking about trying to elevate it a little bit to help them out. But to get a nice seat, something that gets up 10 or 12 feet, yeah. It's going to give them just a little and bit. And you know, of you can prune any tree to make it yeah. whatever you want. As long as you prune it, it's going to stay where you want it. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. What time? 7.40. All right, I'll make a motion to continue February 26th, time 7.30. I'll second that. Motion been sec uh, made and seconded. Everybody agree? Everybody. Any disagreements? All favor. Uh, Thank you. 26. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you.